David, it's good to have you on. So many places to go. I, I wanted to start with the China story because we're just getting news now that you have to test negative coming from China. Clearly, there are millions of cases. We don't know exactly. It's an interesting experiment op opening that country up, COVID, to an unvaccinated population. What do you think is going to be the impact on, on the market and the economy? There's this view that it's going to add to inflation, which goes against your thesis. Well, you know, I found it interesting that people thought that the reopening trade uh, was going to be inflationary because of the impact that could have, say, on energy and on uh, material prices. But it, I found it a little disingenuous because we were talking about all year long that in addition to the war in Ukraine, one of the critical cost push inflation developments was the fact that uh, China continued with its uh, aggressive uh, COVID zero policy. So. You can't have it both ways. Uh, I, I think right now it's, um, you know, two sides of the same coin. Uh, you, you've got the reopening trade, as you said, into a country that um, has had a very uh, sloppy uh, vaccine rollout. So I think the overriding impact right now is going to be what this does to Chinese demand, Chinese consumers, because I think that the fear factor, I mean, we saw this, you know, here at home in the right. uh, opening months of the pandemic, how people reacted. Uh, I mean, people were deciding not to go out uh, even before the shutdowns took place. So I think that the overriding impact is going to be more disinflationary because of the impact it's going to have on consumer demand in China. And what about winners into next year, David? Because you, you think the inflation story, you think inflation is really coming down, right? And that we're going into a recession. Does that yeah. mean that you should be buying these beaten down growth stocks? Well, I... No, I, I would say not yet, uh, and I don't think that there's enough valuation support uh, just yet. I, I think that if my thesis plays out, that uh, inflation comes down more sharply than what is generally expected, and that the Fed uh, ends up uh, doing a classic pause, which they will do, uh, and then a pivot, and that's just the interest rate cycle at play. The question is timing. That should benefit the growth stocks, since they are naturally the longest duration stocks uh, in the market, but the question will be timing. Uh, I, I sense that by the end of the year, there'll be a much better valuation support because I think there's another couple of legs down in the group. But I, I do think that, you know, every, everybody is value over growth. I think that's really a crowded trade. Um, but I think that in generally for the stock market as an asset class, the spare market isn't over. So I'd be very cautious, uh, you know, notwithstanding the most defensive areas of the market or the areas that yeah. have real true secular growth characteristics. Um, but my sense is you're right. In the name of consistency, if long-term rates end up coming down, like I think they will, uh, that's going to breathe life into the growth stocks. But it's probably going to be a second half of the year story at best. So you said stick with the secular growth winners. I wanted to talk to you about defense stocks because I know you're very bullish on that group. Why? What are, what are some of the catalysts for you? Well, be, be, because military spending uh, is going up uh, in, in every part of the planet. Uh, and when you start seeing stories... For example, in Japan, uh, where you know they've shed their pacifism and embarking on one of the most ambitious military spending programs uh, in the past several decades. Uh, Europe doing the same thing. We know what the military budget, the Pentagon budget in the U.S., and we know what the reasons are. So, I'd say that you know aerospace defense uh, doesn't have uh, large cyclical characteristics. Uh, if you're concerned about a recession. Um, I'm not going to say anything is immune, but they're less sensitive to the economic cycle uh, and they're very sensitive to the government spending cycle on defense because uh, that's where their contracts are. Uh, so you have tremendous earnings visibility in this group. Uh, they're up 14 uh, percent this year. Very quietly, everybody looks at the NASDAQ. Uh, everybody looks at the financials. Um, you know, they look at value over growth. Um, but what was missing in the whole thing, and of course, focused on energy, but the uh, the defense stocks and the S&P this year very quietly have turned in a 14 percent gain. And I expect that that'll still be a good place to have your equity exposure for the coming year.